Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. We are in the starter deck duel area and uh, we're going to be playing the last deck, Sylvan Wisdom. The pressure was rising in the comments for the last of the starter decks and I have been procrastinating on this one like crazy. And the reason is I don't think this deck is very good. You have a couple of really, really nice bombs in here, like Tribute to the World Tree, which is absolutely fantastic, and Marwyn's Kindred. But especially Marwyn's Kindred doesn't seem like it wants to be in this deck very much. This deck is just trying to do too many things. I think what they should have done was gone straight elves with things like the Lorian Lookout and um, Great Haven's Navigator. Chance Met Elves, Nisa Resurgent Animus, and kind of got rid of the rest of the stuff that's just working on scrying. Arwen itself, it just doesn't do a lot. Um, it, it gives you plus one, plus one counters on things whenever you scry, but you have to make something else happen in order to do that. I mean, scrying is very strong. Putting one, one counters on things is strong. But especially the pay one blue, one green for generic in order to do something kind of weak. It's kind of, uh, it's one of those cards that, you know, I wish they had dropped the scry thing in here. But they had to get the Lord of the Rings things in here. And I do get that. That is what this whole set was about. This is what this year in Magic the Gathering has been about was Lord of the Rings. So they had to sneak it in here somehow, some way. And this is what we get. Um, I do like a couple of the cards in here, like Tribute to the World Tree. If you are running Mono Green, this card is devastatingly good. Or even Selesnia with tokens and stuff like that. This is very, very, very strong card. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two 1-1 one, one counters on it, which means that you get card advantage if your guys have three or more power, like Nisa, like Glorfindel, like Chance Met Elves, and 1-1 one, one counters on things if they're smaller, like the Nimrodel Watcher, like the Llanowar Alone Speaker, the Lotharian Lookout, etc., etc., very, very strong card overall. Does cost three green, though, so it is a little bit harder to get off than play on turn three because we're probably going to have blue mana on the field as well. Now, in the chances of chances situations, what exactly is this deck trying to do? We got the Nimrod Watcher, which states that whenever you scry, it gets plus one, plus zero, and can't be blocked this turn. This ability triggers once each turn. It's fantastic. It's pretty good for a scry deck to have that, especially with things like the Lotharian Lookout, which states that whenever this attacks, you scry one. So you swing with both Lotharian Lookout and the Nimrodel Watcher, and lo and behold, you scry with the Lotharian Lookout, and then it gets plus one, plus zero, so it swings in for three unblockable. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. There are also a couple of very good cards that help us to scry outside of swinging with creatures, but we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, Elven Farsight is one of my favorite scry cards. A really good one drop in green, I would say for almost anywhere, to be honest. You scry three, then you reveal the top card. If it's a creature card, you draw it. It's pretty good. It's pretty solid. You put the things you don't want to the bottom, and you get to draw a card if you put a creature on top, and you could definitely manufacture that. And we also have things like Desynchronize, which you return target card to owner's hand, Scry 2. I think this is too expensive for what it does, but it is a card that we have in our deck. We'll use it if we get it. And we also have things like Impede Momentum, which you tap a target creature, put three stun counters on it, Scry 1. That's enough to trigger our effects from the Watcher, from the Arwen, etc., etc. Other cards in here that do scry stuff is Chance Met Elves grows by 1-1 one, one. every time that you scry. Grey Haven Navigator, this gives us a scry. Glorfindel gets really nasty whenever it starts scrying. You can force things to block Glorfindel, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so whenever you scry, it gets plus one, plus zero, or plus one, plus one, and then it must be blocked if if able, if the opponent has something untapped, they must block this if you choose the 
first bullet, and if you choose a second bullet, can't be blocked by more than one creature this this turn. So either you make sure that this stays alive, or 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 you make sure something dies. We also have Glad Rhyme Guide, or the Galad Rhyme Guide. Which states that whenever it enters the battlefield, use Gry 2. We're continuing to do Gry, 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 Gry. Now, let's talk about a couple of weird, odd um, inputs into this deck. Let more warm, loam speaker, Nisa, resurgent animist, and Azuri, stalker of spheres. Spheres is supposed to be our rares in this deck, some of our rares. And I don't think they really... have much of a place in this particular deck like add one mana of any color it's mana ramp right but our highest creature is five nisa has a landfall ability if you place more than one land out on the battlefield each turn it does crazy things incredible things but one for one thing that wizards forgot to look at was that you can't actually do the second ability of uh this which is insane i mean the second time you play a land you reveal cards from the top of the library until you reveal an elf or an elemental card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom in a random order. Fantastic. I can't put two lands out, though. Not with this deck. Therefore, this card is completely wasted. Completely wasted because we cannot play a second land. Therefore, it's a 3-3. Three, three. That's just a 3-3. That gives you one color of your choice of mana whenever a land enters a battlefield. So you get one extra land per turn. It doesn't need to be in here. I think it was an oversight. So, yay. Azuri, Stalker of Spheres. I think that this card is just bad for four it's a three three and then whenever it enters the battlefield you may pay three when you do proliferate twice okay fine in a proliferate deck actually very solid in a proliferate deck because whenever you proliferate you draw a card cool 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 nothing else in this deck proliferates nothing else that's it this is the one this is the one card that proliferates therefore you don't get to draw cards off of it especially since Paying seven for a three three that proliferates twice is a little bit rough in a deck that doesn't have any synergies. Yeah, you can make an argument that if you have tribute to the world tree and a couple of other things, giving one one counters as things, and then you proliferate, this is very powerful. And I would tell you that you are correct. But just the fact that you have to make so many other things happen before this becomes good is, uh, you know, <laughs> it, you know. Do I have to say more? Do I have to say more? Yeah, it's not good. Not good at all. And then you also have Elrond, Master of Healing. This card is actually very, very solid in this deck. Yeah. Whenever you scry, you put a 1-1 counter on each creature, each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. Absolutely phenomenal for this deck. But the rest of the stuff just doesn't work. Yeah, we also have to deal with this card here, Lost Isle Calling, and it's just way, way too slow for this deck. Whenever you scry, you put a first counter on a Lost Isle Calling, then you can pay two blue for generic, and you exile this, draw a card for each first counter on it. If you had seven or more first counters on it, you take an extra turn after this one, all well and good. But it costs six mana. We don't have any ways of ramping, as well as we have to scry, what, seven times before Lost Isle of a Calling gives us a second turn. But the community has spoken and said that they wanted this video, and... I guess this could be a warning to everybody to not play this deck under any circumstances. We're going to get into some matches. We're going to see how this bad boy does in battle. And you're going to see that actually sometimes it can be very good whenever you get the things that actually work together going and the opponent does not have removal. Both of those things have to be true. Then this deck can be good. Other than that, ah. Just watch the matches, make your own mind up about how this deck does, and I'll see you in a minute for the wrap-up. All right, let's see what we got. Both Arwens in hand, and Azuri. 
One thing about this deck is you do want to mulligan more often than I would in the other starter decks. And this is a very good hand. Not very strong. I'm actually thinking about dumping off one of the lands, to be honest. I want all of this stuff. Hmm. Let's drop one of the Nim Rodel Watchers. We got another one in the deck anyway. It's where land can come out untapped. Opponent plays a mountain and pass it a turn. We play the Eva Maya Coast untapped. Though no turn one plays. Maybe the opponent doesn't know these decks very well, and we are facing Gruel. All right. Well, starting out with the lookout. Get that scrying going. Probably going Chance Met Elves next because he's going to have fight spells. And we want to get above those fights as fast as humanly possible. Plays a tapped land. And passes the turn. Interesting. Well, Chance Met Elves. Swing. Scries one. We want that on top. Puts a 1-1 one -one counter on the Chance Met Elves. And we are already into damage area. Opponent still has not played anything. That's the thing. With this deck, if you draw all of your expensive stuff, you just immediately die. But if you mulligan and get your cheaper stuff, you're doing a little bit better. And Rampaging Raptor is very good indeed for our opponent. Well, we'll drop the this guy. See what he does. We need that fifth land. We're going to put that here. A 6-5. On turn four, in starter deck, dual area. Pretty solid. Now, we are going to lose our dude. So, scrying is going to be a little bit harder. We do have this desynchronize, which is really going to help against the Rampaging Raptor. Maybe we're actually taking a turn off playing the Glorfindel. Dauntless Rescuer, but we could still swing in with the Chance Met Elves, of course. Well, depending on if he taps out, we really want to swing here. We want him to swing, and we're going to take it. Then we're hoping to beat him up on the back end of things. There's a Samet. So he gets a card off of it. He does swing. No blocks. He does swing. Hmm. What if we did this? Drop this. Pass the turn after swinging with the Chance Met Elves. Chance Met Elves gets in pretty easily here. You don't block it, do you? He does block it. Okay. Well, he blocks it. <laughs> you don't take the six. That is a lot of damage to take, though. Understandable. Now, let's see if he actually swings. Swinging would actually, in my opinion, be wrong, but we do have the desynchronize. Shivan Branch Burner. Okay. No swing. Swing? Okay. Well, we do have Impede Momentum. Whenever this deals combat damage, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker. Yeah, well... Kind of a wasted card in this deck. This is four. This is seven. Let's do this. Put it on the top or bottom of your library, please. We will scry to bite down is looking phenomenal. Land not looking too bad, but we're going to put it to the bottom. All right. So. Now that we're scrying around a little bit, get this on the Watcher. Everything grows. That's eight. Well, that's a lot of damage. He says good game. I'll say good game, and we are up one nothing. Going on to round number two. All green mana. But we do have Chance Met Elves. We have the Arwen. Undomiel. I don't know how to say that word. Only green mana, though. Hmm. 
My greed tells me to keep, but my brain tells me to mole. All green mana again, and a worse hand. Um, all right, we'll do it again. Mirror can go away, and one blue. Do it like this, though, just in case. Could be a really long game, who knows? We also scry a lot, so maybe we get to it. It's rough. It's rough going down to five in starter deck duels. It does happen, though. And it looks like we're facing Golgori. Lots of good removal for him. Prowler comes out. It looks like he does get land. Does he put it to his hand? That's the question. He does. Plays a forest, passes the turn. Well, we could Elvish Farsight here. We need that land. We need to draw a card. We definitely want the bite down. Reveal. Swing. Scrys again. Put it to the top. Takes a damage. Pass a turn. We did draw Lone Speaker. So our hand is now a little bit cheaper. Vanquish a week. Fine. We answer with uh, Lone Speaker then. Loam Speaker, Forest, pass the turn. Opponent. Desynchronized, probably playing a pretty significant role in this one. Yeah, whenever it enters the battlefield or dies, you surveil one. Maybe that's an impede momentum. Oh! Go for the throat. Totally derailed right there. Oh my god. <laughs> well, tap this dude out. Nisa is the only creature we have, so we're going to put it on top. Going to make sure we get at least a creature on the field. Oh, 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 man. Absolutely brutal. Ravenous Gigamol. Definitely wants to get something, right? The Death Bloom. Okay. Makes sense. Play the Nisa. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now it is. Yeah, this is us, us getting run over. <laughs> I can't play it. And uh, that is how you lose to removal, guys. That's how you do it. Oh, uh, score one for the loss column. <laughs> That's how you lose to removal. He just had it all, didn't he? Man, oh, man. All green mana yet again. It's really messing with us. And the hand is okay if we had one blue. I would keep. Without that blue, though, we can't really cast anything. Well, I guess we have Mirror of Galadriel on turn two. Then the Glorfindel on turn three. Opponent does go first. We're on the draw. That gives us an extra card. I will justify things in any way. We're going to keep this. Though we could make the argument that Mirror of Gladriel is actually worse on the draw than on the play. Branch Rider comes out, swings in for one. Fine, fine, fine. We draw Isle of Calling. Of course, it's a blue card. So these two are unplayable right now. We saw the mirror, we still have the Glorfindel, and then we could eventually get into the guide here. Man, okay. Well, Forest Forest, Mirror of Gladriel. Tap land for the opponent. So wings in for two. Okay, down to 16. No plays. And we got a blue. We did it. <laughs> we can magic now. I'm thinking we start off with Glorfindel. Just to get something on the field that could block. Maybe absorb some of his spells. There's a stick here. Oh, we get a rope. And Glorfindel hits the battlefield. What else? You've got something else, opponent. 
for two, that's got to be like bite down or whatever it is for that particular deck, like a fight spell. He just passes though. Mountain. And the Ogre Battle Driver. Pretty good card for the deck. And he passes. Okay. Well, could put it on this. Could start swinging. Or we could slow play it. He hasn't seemed to want to attack. Do this. Scry 2. We need the bite down. We kind of want that land. Give me the bite down first. We can always impede momentum. Give me the land first. No, give me the bite. Because we can both impede momentum and bite down. And then we can say Glorfindel must be blocked. So we either get rid of the ogre or he chumps with the branch rider or the mana dude. I would honestly just trade the battle driver for the Glorfindel personally. But it looks like he's going to chump. But he chumps with his mana rock. Okay. Okay. Totally 100% fine. We could even just drop something like Glad Hear Him Guide, or we could bite down on the Ogre Battle Driver and then swing in really nicely. I think that's what we do unless the field changes. We get a swing from the Branch Rider. What does he have? Well, make him have it. Colossal growth out of hand, though. Let's bite down. Right here. Swing. And get Lost Island a calling going. Okay, so we're down to three cards. Opponent has four. But he decided to get rid of his mana ramp. And we kill the battle driver. He's down to a branch rider. Warmonger. That's a good that's a good play right there. That's very, very good. Comes in for four, gets to look at the top six cards of the library, reveal a dragon. Does he reveal a dragon? He does not. That's good. Well, we're gonna have to turn this off. It is a sorcery. I guess we could draw that. Right. Grows the Lost Island of Calling. Grows the Glorfindel. Swings in. Plays the Nimrodel Watcher. Pinging ourselves for one damage. Warmonger. Not going to be a problem for a couple of turns. We're at five mana. It'd be really bad to see a dragon that could fly here. Well, that's about the same. So, wings in. We will not block. We'll take four. We draw the lookout. This is four. Hmm. Guess we're going to scry. Oh, that's good. That could go to the bottom. But we want the Elven Farsight. Must be blocked. Swing in for seven. Pass the turn. Sure, sure. See if we can get Elven Farsight for the victory. Now, if he swings here, he loses. If he doesn't swing here, he loses. He needs to drop a creature. And we get a fight. Or a bite, I should say. 
Fight and bite. Fights uh, the do damage to each other. Bites one creature does damage to another. Okay, sure. I guess we're gonna drop the lookout, right? Let's see what we get. We might have something else that we want to put out, out on the field. We do. Reveal. Draws. Chance met elves. And are we being defensive or are we still being aggressive? We could be aggressive with the Watcher. And that puts him on a one turn clock. He needs to find a way to kill me right now. Now, there are cards that will allow him to easily do so. He gains one life, though, which puts him out of reach for my guys. That is definitely a shame. Mm. Dragon Whelp is good. We draw a Loam Speaker. Now, can he kill me with the Dragon Whelp? Probably not. That costs five. We can't do that yet. So I guess we're just building out our board, passing the turn. He can get this up to five, but not six from what I can see. He could have another land. It's already kind of too late. It goes through. So the only question I have to our opponent here, our wise and courageous opponent, did you draw a untapped red source? Untapped red source kills us. Nope, he had it right here. <laughs> Killing me with flare. Wait, come on. There you go. There you go. You did it. You won a game of magic. Oh, man, we were so close. We were so close. So we've fallen behind. One win. Two losses. So we need to have a really good showing for the next two rounds in order to put this guy above 500. Tons of mana, a lookout, and Arwen. Arwen and Lothorian lookouts, very good together, and Elven Farsight as well. We're going to keep it. Start to build out our mana base, tapped. Lookout comes down first. Huh. Nimrodel Watcher as well. So a lot of really good cards in this opening here. Outfitter. Okay. So we are facing the Boros deck. This deck we're actually pretty weak against. I usually. But we do have some nice plays that we could do. Especially with the Impede Momentum here. That goes to the bottom. This gets a 1-1. One, one. Not quite above his removal yet, but now he will be. Bottom. Bottom. We have mana for turn. And we will reveal it. Awesome. Grow the lookout. At least the lookout is above the um, heirloom. The battle him. Okay, war whip coming out. That's a double strike card. It's very, very good. Um, I guess since we drew this, we will swing, right? We're going to swing anyway. Swing. Chance Met L's pretty solid. Grows the lookout. Blocks. He could double block this lookout. And he does. Fine, fine. We'll block this rebel. Kill it. As well as the other one. Go with the loam speaker. Pass the turn. Opponent. Now we can start swinging with lands with the land of war loam speaker. Aspirant comes out. Good card. <laughs> right, because it costs zero now. I see ya. I see you. All right. Well, let's impede momentum here. Mana, no. 
Grows the Arwen. Swing. Four damage. Watcher. Pass the turn. Opponent. Love to see the tapped land. And a Kimba. You don't love to see the Kimba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Must be feeling real big. Planner Disruption on the Nimrodal Watcher. Good stuff all around. And another Impede Momentum. Holy cow. We're going to put that to the bottom. Grows the Loam Speaker. Swing. Down to eight. Police Chance Met Elves. And he is... Impede Momentum really pulled some weight in this one. Let's see if we can actually finish off the opponent hit now. It's a 5-3 on board. Oh, and a Hover Wings. Not good. We draw a Nimble Rod. Yeah. Let's Gry 2. Put that to the bottom. Um, this. It's eight damage. This is fatal. But we have to be aggressive. Blocks, blocks. Okay. So, so far we've been able to live. <laughs> and that is enough for me. We've been the aggressor in this Burroughs battle as well. Man. We were right there. Celebron the Wise. Watcher. This is 12 in the air. All right. All right. I know when I've been beat. So we are one win, two losses. Island of the Calling, the Arwen, the Nimble Rod Watcher. These two together, very, very good. Real nice, cheap hand. You'll love to see it. Starting off with the Falls. We don't want all of this land really coming in tapped, though. Okay, so facing Orzov, Norns, Inquisitor. This is going to be a tough match. Hmm. Island of Calling Pass. Opponent. Plays of Plains. Another Norn's Inquisitor. You hate to see it. Oh, man. Icker Drinker. Swings in for one, and we are way behind. We got an untapped land here, but all of our things cost two, so we might as well get out our win. Pass the turn back to the opponent. Get some tapped land out of the way. Nimble Rod Watcher can come down next. We could also impede momentum. But I don't think we're really worried about impede no momentum yet. Um, desynchronize. We could desynchronize an incubator token. Scry 2. That seems very strong for us. Ossification. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go down to 17. We'll play it on tap land. This, this, pass. Got a planes. Our opponent hasn't missed a land drop and neither have we. Kind of a blessing and a curse. And here comes the incubator tokens. And they're big. Yeah, Norn's Inquisitor for the rescue. Wow.
Yep. Taking eight. Tapped land basically kills us here. We'll drop the chance met elves. We will swing with one. Get a Scryce right out to the bottom. We need actual magic cards. Now chance met elves can trade with these. Well, we are down to our last moment. Deadly derision. Uh, <laughs> well, so this is why this has taken so long to do is this deck tends to get trapped in these spaces where you really can't do a whole lot. I mean, there's no possible way we win. Now he should sacrifice the Icker Drinker. No, he didn't pay for that. Okay, well, I'm tempted to just... Ah, see, that's fatal. That's way, way, way fatal. We block this. Four, five, six, seven. Take seven. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do at this point. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to help. Meant to not play that, but hey, whatever. A loss is a loss. And you know what? It was fine. The opponent didn't rope or anything like that. It's fine. We take losses like that, especially, especially with Sylvian Wisdom. And we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. With the post game wrap, this deck did exactly how it has usually done for me. Now, if we had found the other, if I had hit record on OBS, then this would have been a slightly different video. But this is more honest in most ways because this deck does not do very well. You could get on streaks where you win and you win and you win with it. But it, most of that's due to having the copy of Tribute to the World Tree or pretty good use of Loam Speakers and... Um, Ireland, it really is luck based. It really is. This deck is rough. My cousin has spent money on a deck like this in real life, and just come on, man. Like, let's play some. Let's play some big decks, you know. But it's one of those decks that doesn't win a whole lot. Now there are uses for this deck, like if you're trying to do your daily wins and you just have Simic then sure, play this deck, get your dailies done, etc., etc. But this is not a deck I would rely on at all to grind wins out for a day. You're going to be losing just as much, if not more often, than you win with this one. It is so much less powerful than things like the Rebel Armory, the Scrapyard Sacrifice, I think it's pretty decent. Sal Savage Scavengers, I think, is one of the best decks here. Outside of things like Grave Secrets, which I've spoken very highly of, and probably the actual best, Legions of Phyrexia and Rebel Armory. Those, those are the guys that you want to be doing your dailies with. And <clears throat> the Sylvan Wisdom is just, it's just, it's too inconsistent. As I said, you could go on streaks where you win five, six, seven games in a row, but it's going to be followed up by horrific losses for the rest of the day. And it's just how it goes. It's just trying to do too many things. If you think about Marwyn Kindred, this wants to be in a tokens deck. And it works really well with Tribute to the World Tree, but getting both of these into the hand is very difficult, especially with the lack of card draw, the lack of removal. If a creature gets on the field from the opponent's side, they get to keep it. We only have the two removal spells with the bite downs and kind of a halfway removal spell with the Glorfindel when it lines up with getting a bunch of scry effects going. But it's just not consistent enough. Mirror of Gladriel, probably really weak card for this deck because golly gee, it costs five 
to draw a card and scry one. That is a big ask. Um, and then Marwyn, in order for it to be good, you have to have a lot of mana. Overall, I give this guy a 2 out of 10. Good try, Wizards, but this is this is probably the weakest of the decks. So really, 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10. And it's just it's just not going to get you your wins. And that's why it's taken me so long to make this video because I dreaded it. I really did. But I am trying to bring an honest perspective to these decks as well as the decks that I present outside of the starter deck dual area of the arena. I try to bring an honest perspective and this wasn't it. <laughs> Thank you for joining today. If you like the content, make sure you like the video. If you disagree with me, let me know why in the comments down below. I might horribly misplay this deck. If I do, let me know down below what you do to make this deck win. But I certainly cannot see this being the deck that I bring in to my dailies every day. Thank you for joining today. Make sure you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.